sector of finance and technology. His expertise promises to eliminate the path of fintech startups, showcasing their impact on the financial landscape. As we delve into, into the world of fintech, we anticipate gaining fresh perspectives on how technologies revolution finance, making it more accessible, efficient, and inclusive. By the end of this webinar, we hope you will leave with a clearer understanding of the dynamic fintech ecosystem and its potential to reshape the way we perceive with and interact with money. Before I hand over the virtual stage to my colleague for the official introduction of our esteemed guest, I would like to extend a special thank to our college principal, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani ma'am, and the entire teaching staff for their constant support and encouragement. Your guidance is the driving force behind our educational purpose. As we embark on this enlightening journey together, I encourage you all to embrace curiosity, engage actively, and make the most of this opportunity to learn and grow. So without further any extension, I would like to invite my colleague to take on the stage and formally introduce our guest speaker, C.A. Jitendra sir, to get ready to be inspired and enlightened. Thank you once again for being here. Let's make this web webinar an unforgettable learning expect expert experience. Thank you, Viraj. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker, C.A. Jitendra Atra, for our masterclass on fintech startups. Mr. Atra currently serves as the CFO and Head of Operations at Zuno General Insurance. His extensive experience is further underscored by his prior position as the CEO of At Munish D. Beyond his impressive career, Mr. Atra is a mentor, educator, and a guiding light for all aspiring professionals in the finance industry. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to our speaker, C. A. Jitendra Atra. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, it's so good to be here. Uh, just a brief about myself. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant, more than two decades of experience in finance now. I started with Deloitte uh, and this brief stint with ICICI Pro Life, then in SBI Life, then the largest reinsurer, uh, Munich Reinsurance as CFO. Now I head finance operations and investments uh, at Zuno General Insurance. So that's first 12 Edelweiss General Insurance. So uh, everybody live and awake, excited about the session. Give me a great high on the messages. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give a boring lecture where I speak and everybody is just listening. Can I get a very, uh, you know, uh, you know, I see a lot of highs, claps. Thank you. That's how it is. I expect a lot of questions. Uh, I will start with a small story. I mean, it's a big background. I am also a fiction writer. Uh, I've written two books, which are on Amazon. The latest one just released uh, uh, a few months back, Love Past Seven. So anybody, uh, yeah, hello, Mahi, how are you doing? So anybody who has a fiction reader can pick up the book. You can always follow me on Insta, or LinkedIn, wherever you find it comfortable. I do give a lot of snippets there as well. Um, FinTech startups, before I start, I mean, I gave you a small story. As I said, I'm a fiction writer, so stories always uh, you know, is a good medium to educate people. So that's how it is. So, you know, it's a small experiment that happened uh, a few years back in one of the institutions which said they had three monkeys, you know, in a steel cage. And the steel cage was actually electrified. And uh, you know, so those three monkeys, you know, they being monkeys, started to climb that steel cage. And after getting electric shocks, they stopped after a while. And as an experiment, uh, they started changing the monkeys. So when the new monkey was introduced and one was replaced, the new monkey surprisingly did not touch the steel cage, expecting that it was shocked or electrified rather. And when they replaced the second monkey, even the second monkey did not touch the steel cage. And by the time they replaced these monkeys, um, all three monkeys were new and they switched off the electric current, but none of the, the monkeys actually touch the cage thinking that it was electrified. So that's another way of thinking, saying that, you know, we assume a lot of things that this is how things would be because we don't question 
the status quo. And so today's, uh, you know, uh, today's lecture is more like, you know, you ask as many questions as possible because this is your time to learn and there's no stupid questions. So yeah, as much of interaction and shows a thumbs up, that's really nice. I'm hoping a lot of, uh, you know, in the chat box, a lot of uh, questions coming in. Um, you know, generally we are talking about, uh, thanks Mehik, uh, fintech startups, you know, as such. So I will say, let's create a fintech startup today and let's understand what, what exactly do you mean by fintech startup or what do you mean by fintech? Any clue on that? I can see the chat boxes so you can put in the answers there. Let's make it a little more interactive instead of me speaking and you listening. It'll be better for all of us to get, get some more, um, you know, learning out of this. Anything, anybody on what do you understand by fintech? Finance plus technology, Pravesh, you're absolutely right. But when I say fintech, what does the fintech do? You know, finance plus technology, but when I say finance plus knowledge, um, Ansh, I would say when I use fintech as a term, what exactly as a company, as in you a startup, what does the startup do? Anything, any, any clue, of course, it's knowledge, it's finance, it's technology. If I were providing financial services, yeah, Pravesh, perfect, makes sense. Something new in the market, Vij Viraj, I wouldn't say new, you know, as, as Pravesh has said, it's financial services provided with the help of technology. Dealing in stocks, mutual funds, that's Mehek, it's, uh, it's uh, financial services. All of this is part of financial services. But if I talk about FinTech, uh, it is more like providing solutions or, uh, you know, financial services solutions with the help of technology, simplifying financial services through the use of technology. And that's what the world of today is. A lot of these uh, startups actually provide a lot of automations so whatever you were doing by a brick and mortar thing in the past, today you do, do it very, very simplified manner using technology. Okay. So that's what fintechs are. And that is going to be the future because one, it saves a lot of costs and two, it gives excellent customer service and customer ease because say in the past, uh, let's take an example of insurance from where my industry where you were actually issuing policies, you know, somebody used to come and write you a check. Somebody used to come and, you know, take a form, go back, you know, issue a manual policy, go back, come back to you. The policy you'll get in 15, 20 days. Today, you get the policy within minutes. Somebody comes and you just open an app, type, make the payment and there, bang, you get a policy right on there. So that's the power of FinTech. And that's why it's more important for you to understand that that's going to be the future. So what's happening in the market today? The only thing which is happening today is all these manual work is getting moved to with the help of finance to a more digital frame of life, right? So today everything is moving from say brick and mortar to digital and that's the power and that's what fintechs are doing. And that's where you see over the past you know, five to 10 years, a lot of automations have happened. Companies are moving in for, uh, you know, the new technology and the new way of doing things. Aniket says startup based in finance services industry, which backed with strong technology. That's perfect. Anshay is automated. The financial services alternate the traditional method. That's also correct. So this is FinTech. Okay. Let's move to startup, right? Let's say, said, you know, it's just having fun creating a startup. What do you need to create a startup? And I am looking at a lot of options, but I'm looking at that one thing without which I cannot move ahead. Mindset. Yes, you're right. But again, something which is your lifeblood of a startup without which completely that one simple thing. The idea and the finances. Idea. You say you're right. Finances. You're right. Asana. Business plan. Technology. Rushit says funding. 
what is that one thing of course we need technology we need business plan all that is right but that one single thing vision aniket you're right you need a vision to build a big business definitely survival in the market ansh knowledge raj absolutely proper team yes innovation excellent all these are right but if i have to pinpoint at that one thing without which i cannot move as a startup network yes and it's, it's perfect you need all these things right but that one single thing if i'm saying you want to start a startup today that one single thing without which you cannot move start something we are says right obviously technology rushid you're right but i think rushid your first answer was the one i was more uh, interested into maybe the earth yeah pervez says funding i would say rather than funding um, the right word for your business will be capital right funding is is because in any kind of business or a startup you cannot move ahead without proper capital now there will be tons and tons of businesses in the market today which have uh, uh, you know a business idea a lot of stuff but they are still you know some businesses i know don't have a proper business model making losses cash losses but are surviving because they have truck loads of capital with them so if you as a business owner or as a business or as a startup you don't have capital then your business will down now die down sooner or later and let's say you know we make a business plan as such right we make a business plan we create we got an idea we created various uh stuff uh we'll come to that aniket if you want we'll go there uh you know he says angel investors and venture capital we'll come to their sources of capital but that's too early um but so without capital your business will not survive you will make losses in the first few years no matter what business you do until unless you have a very very cash efficient business model so you know your lifeline for your business in the first few years especially as a startup remains good source of capital so aniket raises angel investors venture capital but what is the first source of capital what is that where you can find uh, you know your first source of capital as such anybody friends family perfect that's the worst way is your own money i don't think if you don't invest in your business i don't think anybody else will so the first source of capital remains your own money what's the second good strapping is it circle community group of friends family absolutely that's the first source agree so she with the you relatives that's our first source what's the second now you got some money you did business for a few months or uh, you earn that money of course you will burn a lot of money when it comes to business what is the second thing debt you won't get that initially ansh that's too too uh, unless you get into a plant or something of that kind which has a collateral you won't get that generally in a startup people are way way least interested in giving debt because it's a risky proposition for any bank etc so what's the next source today we've got some capital what next somebody used the term up there equity too early mahi uh, i think equity of course equity is what's your capital also equity in the business but if you're looking at listing etc that's a little too late uh, late in the day now you invest a few lakhs here and there into your business now you want somebody else to invest a couple of crores maybe maybe your business has grown a bit and now you want somebody to invest in your business hni is yes and you will find either angels or hni who will put your you know some amount of money into your business and that business you can take in next level what's the next level post that Oh, so Anirudh there's a big one. It says if you have your own money in business and start the business with it, it always gives you leverage to act freely since you are answerable. Anirudh, you are perfectly bang on uh, where you say this. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you need scale, unless you have really truckloads of money in your bank account or your business is generating 
excellent amount of cash which you can grow in business at a given point of time you will need a lot of money to grow your business and that you need uh, support and that's where you find investors supporting your business uh true hni believes in business idea and they invest when no one is investing in the market rushit the uh, first part of the uh, of your statement is correct they invest in the business idea maybe maybe not um, one very very few percentage of investments come only on the idea and we will discuss that what are the other relevant parts because if you get an idea i think 1000 people have 2000 different ideas every day not everybody will be investing only in the idea you need plenty of other things to fall back on that so that somebody it's it's one of the most difficult things to do uh is to get other people's money in your pocket and you know a simple idea that to from a college grad will not be sufficient enough to raise money uh, anirudh says yes till then you have something to show to raise the money anirudh at any given point of time uh, you know if you want to raise money you have to show something right if you created a small business even a even a few lakhs for example you have something to slow show to the world and you can raise money provided somebody invests in your business so all given point of time you have to show something you have to do something to raise uh, then we can yes seed vcs etc will be the next levels uh, private equities and uh, this one yes that's what aniket says your next level is that and then you go to listing so this is your capital raising cycle ansh debt today is possible again i said you need some collateral um uh, you know amount of money mahi says esops i believe it's not csops it's esops esops is not raising money it's giving your uh, uh, employee stock options so it's not raising money currently we're raising money right so let's assume in your startup your fintech startup you got an idea you raised money what next what do you require after that say you will individually raise money what is the next big thing for you know taking the startup next ahead anyone product yes you will come to that you have a product i'm assuming that you you have a product you have an idea pravesh that's fine what else the next thing now as an individual you rushit product team yes pravesh you the next big thing you need to get is your team rushit has something it says esops are something they believe in employee for their achievement and give certain shares and promotion rights sir um see i will come to that let's come to uh, you know the next thing is team so i will answer your question rushi um first you need to have either your promoter team or your management team uh, that's the next thing and that's the one of the most difficult parts of again you know creating the right team for the kind of business that you want to create so if you're creating a team what is the single biggest thing you need to understand uh um, you know first let's look at the management team you are single or you want to breed as a proprietor or you need some more promoters you have to decide that first of all but what is it of course and she is smart people innovative people i can say team builders you know this etc a lot of qualities in individuals but then one big thing that you will look at or a couple of things that you will like finance marketing team must uh i don't understand that rushit what do you mean by that Uh, sir, to grow the business, so marketing also important. But to where to money come from, so for that finance people may help. So, so both the sides are important. So when you create a team, you not only need finance, marketing, you need everything, right? A business needs every single thing. So that's where when you are creating a team, you need or a management team. What are the things that you will consider? Two big elements. Now let me tell you. 90% or more than a startups fail because of promoter disputes you know a couple of people actually come together create a startup then they realize you know one person is not acting good second person not very doing well and says communication yes very important one of the skill 
sir even tacting is also important i believe tech actually you need also. everything you need sales marketing tech admin support hr everything right but as a promoter team or the management team there will be say let's let's put together a small promoter management team what are the things you will look for before actually getting somebody on board anyone okay so two big things when you look for when you actually get promoters on board is one the mindset experience you might might not get uh, ansh interest in idea yes one of the things but first things i think is you and the other people look should have the same bandwidth or, or the same mindset rather if you don't going to gel around with that person you going to split in the near future or not so that you know the equation between the promoters is very important to drive the company together and the second most important thing is you get people from different uh you know skill set so if you are a finance professional you don't take another finance professional as your promoter you take maybe a tech guy you take a sales guy so that you get different skill sets in the organization which can help you and then you can split the departments among the all of them and then move ahead uh aniket says expertise in particular industry aniket you might get might not get that kind of a expertise in the industry so sometimes as a startup you don't command everything because you are generally uh you know start for funds you are uh, always struggling to get people etc so you you have you play with what you have that's how it is uh anirudh says one who is ready to execute the things no matter what trust is important skills are the thing that can build uh, gradually build uh i agree trust is very important skills can be built what you hire for people is attitude you know even we hire people a lot of youngsters is again sometimes we get way way qualified people chartered accountants it ams etc sometimes you get you hire a grad but that grad might have an attitude to learn and that is what counts at the end of the day so you hire people for attitude that's very important so when you hire your team uh, you know below what is that one thing so generally typically you will not have that much amount of cash and that is where you need to have other softer aspects what is how will you get your team how you get the interest of people into your company to join you because you are a startup you are competing against the biggies somebody wants to join an icici somebody wants to join reliance somebody wants to join the big banks etc or the big companies how will you get the people to work for your company what will be your selling strategy of your company and how will you manage competition and ensure that people actually join your organization what is that you offer them than the other companies so now you want to hire people right and not everybody is interested in joining a very small startup especially in the new one so what are the things that you need to provide why will somebody join your sort of think anirudh says i think first the employer must have the belief and clarity on what he is doing and the others can believe it uh again first part i think is belief and yeah that's so true but uh, in a startup you will never have clarity because you are always in a very chaotic situation you are doing something really new maybe nobody's done in the past So that clarity sometimes not available. You have to pave your may, way when you get into business, and you have to think really, really thick and fast. And uh, that's where uh, you create your value. Rushit says is important management towards all. Uh, uh, Rushit, if I tell you I am, jo- I mean to join my company, I'll be very kind and generous to you. Will you join? leaving a multinational company job offer you will not so it's important as a management skill but again it's not something which is very lucrative to somebody who wants to join and make a career 
if you pitch your business properly and your network people may find interest in your business again i think you're leaving people to may that will not help people today people say check with your some of your friends they're very interested in creating their own careers making their own money i don't think too many people are interested in in joining your company if you're not very clear on how to get them in same level of respect knowledge doesn't help guys today in this practical world think whether you will come and join me just for the sake of respect and knowledge when somebody else is offering you big bucks in the market that doesn't happen right so what is it that you offer to the employees it's important to create a win win situation for that person that's joining in that's perfect but how is the question i'm asking you should say correct everyone opinion matters for suggestions and innovations fair enough it's a softer aspect but you need to have something very concrete to get your team in and that's where you know a lot of this creative ideas you should you just mentioned some time back was esops and that is where the biggest element of a startup comes in what exactly is an esop is a stock option which uh, you know you get into a company and uh, you will be offered shares at 10 rupees and imagine if the company grows this 10 rupees value of share would grow to maybe 100 200 500 1000 and that is wealth creation so imagine you get 1 lakh shares when you join in and that's the value of somebody who's taking a risk of working in your company gets so when you are giving that kind of value to any individual versus a very sedate kind of job definitely somebody will be interested so somebody will make a few crores if he works with a startup and the startup really does well but for that you have to convince the individual that this startup is the future and this is going to make big in the next few years as such that's one the second is is giving really good culture um wherein today people don't want to work for a very rigid kind of organization they want to be dynamic learn new things do new things in the market etc and uh, you know that's what you offer and uh, you know great working culture maybe casuals maybe you know really friendly environment that's what people want to work and and you know that's where people are really interested and in you know coming to and working for a startup so it also gives you a lot of uh, uh, so called freedom which you might not get in a very very process driven organization and that's where you are uh, making a difference in their lives uh rishit says yes correct sir and the employee do not leave company if get esops and stay with them and grow with their business that's true the only risk on the flip side of esops is if the company doesn't do well and uh, that's where a huge amount of loss so the employees have to be motivated and keep uh, kept you know really interested in the business showing them the path away that we are going to make money over the period of time it's a tough ask but uh, yeah very important as such so other elements uh, we'll not get i don't have i don't think we have too much of time to deep dive into a lot more elements but you can look at you know just like uh, technology is one of the big items after manpower and that is the most scarce element uh, today given everybody in 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 the startup world requires good tech uh this thing in getting tech talent to your company is always a big challenge today in the fintech world definitely i think a year back you know all the tech uh, guys were actually demanding uh double the amount of salary and people were paying them given a lot of money was coming into the business from uh, various sources as such so even we see top companies management people are indians for example um, yeah proud moment for india yeah that's so true uh in fact indian talent across the world has been recognized as highly as a very very intelligent kind of people a lot of hard working people so that also makes the amount of difference so this as we say the fintech world is uh, is what is moving from a you know manual kind of work to much more automated way what do you think is going to be the future you know if you going to invest in something which is currently happening definitely it's going to be dying down in the next 5 years so you don't create value when you create your startups you create something you envision something of the future so what according to you will be the future of fintech etc and that's you know individualistic as such 
your guess is as good as mine what exact exactly you think because i think this entire digitization is currently happening and uh, that will probably you know every company will have to be um, doing that the companies who don't going to be laggards and they don't going to be out of business sooner so everybody will adopt it the next 5 to 10 years it will be off blockchain is already there i believe a lot of your businesses will move d2c because of that and yes it's currently on the check but what else what do you think is going to be the future and uh, how do you think the tech world are going to change p2p lending again uh, you know blockchain can be done as i said um, currently it's a lot of intermediation happening but that will move from an intermediation to um you know direct to cons uh, consumer that's what d2s is and i think p2p lending is 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 part of it i think even blockchain that the intermediation level will go off and uh, you know you'll get straight up ai yeah ai is already playing a good role i think most of the companies are investing a lot of in ai but you know this again correct wallet tech is already there what is the future i'm talking 5 10 years later what is going to happen how are the markets going to change ai how will ai change the market or how will a, a blockchain change the market what are the things do you think are going to be the change or the part of the future think ai will replace job with unskilled of unskilled employees um i wouldn't say completely but any case the yeah, good part of them will be done and um, i also feel but there will be always some amount of uh, those kind of jobs remaining available for the rent but yeah it will happen as and when it happens well tech plus ai aman you right all that kind of jazz is happening will happen but what exactly will be the future what do you see the future in which i mean just envision what is going to happen with all this kind of changes which is already um, taking the world with the storm yeah all anish a lot of examples um, of tech etc of course in the market today but i think um, the biggest element is going to happen is products now getting designed taking tech into consideration so now we will see product innovations happening just for example uh, uh one thing i can tell you in insurance was was you use your car everybody has insurance of your cars right you pay insurance for a year now we are seeing products which says you use your car today you you pay the insurance only for the day you use it your par- car is parked over the weekend you don't pay insurance so it's called usage based insurance so now getting products designed with technology at the back on with the forefront and saying okay now there are possibilities of products which nobody could have thought of maybe you know 10 years back so automatically a lot of things are coming in similarly for example today using apple watches etc if you are doing 10000 steps your health insurance premium will actually go down given you are having a healthy lifestyle right so your product segments will completely move from what it is right now to a very very traditional format to a very innovative format and uh, that is going to be the next so when you design anything you have to design a product con- considering the technology boom and considering what can happen and how do you give the best possible experience to the customer because today um, earlier the customer was moving out he had to do 10 things today you don't have to make the customer do anything you just pick up the phone and and he can get whatever he wants uh banking sector would grow and automatically at the end good business says will grow in future i think uh rishit given the economy and the way the country is going most of the segments will grow i mean banking is part of the economy so it will definitely grow given the economy is growing that's the standard growth but i think these fintech segments or fintech companies as such will be um, you know even at the forefront because the advantage it gives um, given you know in four or five clicks as i mentioned somebody can buy anything on the mobile phone today otherwise it would have taken 15 20 days so if somebody is actually going with a um, old age model as such they are far behind uh, the value chain as such so 
yeah it's all providing great value to the customer and at the same time saving a lot of costs for the company so i'm providing 2x or 3x of the value to him at maybe 0.25% of the cost so that's the big advantage and you know through integrations between companies a lot of data can be moved and and accounted without having people so that gives a huge advantage to fintechs and that's going to be the future of business so good guys i think uh, uh, that's that's something that i wanted to give a brief i will take a few questions and uh, if you have and let's see if you have any questions i can answer them as such fintech will play a role in digital and uh, all the things as we see definitely fintechs are going to be threat for banking industry i didn't say that banking industry would have fintechs uh, aniket uh, in fact banks will have you seen a lot of apps coming in um, and now i think a lot of nbfcs are coming in with tech platforms and uh, you know now you can take loans etc you know on the mobile apps etc a lot of uh, innovation a lot of small companies coming in and this will be a transition i think you know already seen a lot of uh, 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 you know a lot of uh, branches either getting shut or or not getting opened right now because a lot happens on the app etc but you know some branches will remain it it is a change in the business model as such and that will affect rishit says how that i didn't get what exactly would you want about sir that student was saying that fintech are going to be threat for banking industry so i was asking how that it will be threat for banking industry okay aniket uh, do you have a view on that Okay, anything. Okay. Any further? Questions? So my, so my point of view is that if, if because it is a trade because uh, that's why banking industries they are mostly making innovations and they are thinking about in, uh, technology. So if they, if there is no threat, then why they will change? Like there is threat, that's why they are changing. So why only banking then? I think every industry. I mean, first of all. Uh, the fintechs we in that industry will be a, a threat to a bigger bank maybe but it will be part of the same industry if it's a new fintech again it will be in the uh, in the banking sector itself so the industry is not under threat but uh, you know of course everybody has to move from a uh, you know age old model to a more tech model otherwise uh, uh, you know that can change a lot of things for them as a business model so they have to keep innovating as well Anshil, I see join hands to set balance confirmation portal. It's a long time back. Uh, Rushit, yeah, such scams do happen too. Helps in audit. Yes, everything of this will help in audit. A lot of uh, you know technology is getting used to ensure, but a lot of loopholes also happen. So yeah, I think that's a lot. Any further questions? Anyone wants to pick up? about ocm sorry i am not updated on that what exactly is as the spelling ka correct aman ocen i am not updated what exactly you mean is ocen oh open credit okay open credit again it's uh, it's a new thing again it can happen um, uh, over the period of time let's see it's it's a lot of things happening in the industry today what gets picked up and what gets scaled uh, depends on how, on the exposure and uh, also how the consumers take it etc so let's see how whether it or even the regulators pushing it also depends on you know the future etc How should a fintech startup negotiate the balance between maintaining company pricing and ensuring sustainable? Good question, Mehak. Um, her question is balance between uh, maintaining competitive pricing and ensuring sustainable. So, if you see a lot of fintechs don't make profits in the first few years, and uh, I mean they have to build business first, and all business built requires a lot of capital, right? And burning losses, etc. so it's also a factor of how much capital you have to burn so if you do have a lot of capital 
um, that is the determining factor of where you draw the line of burning capital and getting scale versus going to profitability. So as long as you are growing and you burn capital or when you realize you need to make money, you stop because then your capital is actually, you know, you, you done away with your capital and now you move to actually profitability. That's a call. Otherwise, generally, if you keep on pumping capital, also the market share is very important. If you feel that there's headroom depth there, so when we were in the initial few years of the insurance industry, our motive was very clear. Just go ahead, grow, grow, grow. Capital was not a constraint because we knew once you grow to that a level, you know, profits will definitely come. So sometimes today, of course, valuations is a big game also. The more you grow, the more you valuations, profits is at the back burner. But, you know, over the period of time, you need to get to profitability as such. Riya says, as the industry continues to evolve, what do you believe will be the next big disruption here? Very difficult, uh, Riya. I think uh, as the technology evolves, um, you don't know where, what is going to come new because, you know, suddenly you might see, you know, what, you know, voice carrying in or something that picks up really fast and uh, you never know what's the next big thing. But you have to be really updated on understanding where technology is taking you. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think as in when new things come up, just keep reading, just moving and it will take, uh, uh, you know, to the right level. Thanks, uh, uh, Rishit. I think it's good. It's great interacting with you guys as well. Always good fun to meet new people. Ansh is saying, what application do you see for Astral Intelligence with the financial industry? I think currently there are no applications as such, but you use a lot of data. And for that, you use a, a lot of uh, languages, either you queries or stuff, create your own databases. But more importantly, have a lot of data and see if that data, make, data makes sense uh, to create some artificial intelligence. But more importantly, it's a, it's a lot happening in the market where they're trying to use it and move ahead and figure out some things and get some value out of that artificial intelligence as such. Uh, some pain points that entrepreneurs stumble upon while building a filter setup lots um, you are creating a startup means you have pain point every few every day i think the first biggest is capital i think once you get that rest of the things are sorted but capital is one of the biggest pain points as we mentioned team is another technology is another getting a right business model is another pretty big problem because you don't know how market behaves right product pricing everything so if you are an entrepreneur wanting to do a startup, get ready for a lot of chaos because a decade or so or five to 10 years minimum, you'll go through a lot, but you, you kind of make a lot of money after that 10 years period of time, mostly. Uh, he's saying, Pravesh is saying how technology takes place in IBVC and PE career. Um, again, you know, all this are... Uh, you know, evaluating business models at the end of the day. If you don't understand how technology can uh, affect a business model, you won't be making any decisions there, right? So you have to take decisions and invest basis the, the business model and that's where technology plays a huge role. So you need to understand every bit of technology to make these decisions and have a good career in these uh, areas as such. Um, what skills are required to work in the fintech industry? Uh, Ansh, it's a good question, but according to me, one, you need an attitude, right attitude to work in any industry, any place. But if you are students, I would recommend to take a big degree, degree, anyone, CA, MBA finance, if you can get IDMs, IM, whatever, or MBA from a right B school, even if you want to be an entrepreneur, because a degree always helps, somebody will take you seriously. If I want to fund uh, a BCom grad versus a uh, uh, maybe an IM, I would rather go. CFA is good if you want to take uh, investment as a career, stocks, etc. On the investment side, then CFA is a good option. Otherwise, there are plenty of other degrees. You need to have one big degree along with BCom because BCom today is just uh, a normal degree, but you need to have one big if you want to make a career anywhere, I believe. Um, Ria says, sir, another question, would it, um, would be how should a fintech start navigate the balance between maintaining economic pricing? We just mentioned that, right? I just answered that question. Um, how good is CMA? Um, I believe it's okay, but uh, I wouldn't consider that uh, as 
as one of the top degrees, I would still go for a big MBA finance or a CA if required to get into FRM with tech knowledge. Mm, not much. Again, I I believe as a career option, um, I would go with a big degree always. Uh, but if you don't have one, ideally, even after having a big degree is how you grow in your, how much you understand and you grow. But a big degree always give you that push in every stage of your life, whether you're a VP, senior VP, even a CFO, if you have that big degree, people take you much more seriously as such. Master's from abroad, good to increase our knowledge in finance and special degree. Uh, Rishit, I, I kind of place two things differently, um, knowledge and degree, right? I mean, at the end of the day, one, of course, knowledge comes from experience. You work, you get a lot of experience, you get a knowledge and that's continuous, right? In two decades, I'm still learning after two decades as well in finance. So uh, abroad degrees, I am a strict believer that if you want to work abroad, then the degrees are good. But if you take a degree abroad, come in India, want to work here, it's a different ball game altogether because people know, you know, typically that those degrees are not very competitive unless you get into a really big one like a Harvard London Business School or something of that kind. So if you get into that kind of a thing, then it's value everywhere. Because you're a low, lower university out there, coming back to India, it's tough because, you know, here the competition is good. But I think a lot of growth in India, I would want to make my career if I was a young uh, uh, student as such. Good, guys. A lot of questions. I hope you, if you like the session, give me a yes if you like the session. A lot of questions. Loved interacting and lovely to be, guys. Please read my book. Follow me everywhere and we can connect. And give me feedback wherever you can find and we can definitely uh, connect again uh, anywhere on social media, anywhere that you can think of. Love Past 7 is my book. I, I kind of I happily write a lot of fiction romance. So it's an exciting book. Just pick it up. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, much. sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. It was Thank great you, to have sir. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.